All right. Good morning. Uh, we are we. I. I. There's no we. It's me. Just me. It's always me. Welcome back. We're off on another adventure to rescue another international truck. Um, my buddy that I got this truck from down in southern Oregon. I ended up getting two. This truck here and another one. And now we're on part two of the uh, adventure of getting the other one. So part one is that video. You guys, I'll link that down below so that you guys can watch that. And part two is this one coming up right now. Now this one is a 1971 or two Travelette uh, short bed step side. And uh, I think it's a former railroad truck. So it's that orange, like the dump truck is right there. It's that O dot orange. So I think this is a rail truck, but funny story. My buddy who I got it from was uh, hauling it down from his farm this morning. So he's going to bring it into town so I could just pick it up at his shop and be a lot easier. And uh, <laughs> he just called me like an hour ago and he goes, Hey man, so I was coming down the mountain with the truck and trailer and uh, broke the steering rod on my 5500 and almost put it in the ditch. I was like, did you crash? He's like, no, no, no I didn't crash. But truck's done, so I gotta dump this international on the side of the road. It's like in a gravel pit, or I don't know. He sent me a picture and a pin drop, so we're we're going we're going on a scavenger hunt. Is what I'm telling you. And uh, anyway, so he the trailer he was hauling it with is the only trailer he has that's big enough to haul his 5500. So he had to dump the international off the trailer, pull forward as best he could, unhook the trailer, move the 5500 off to the side, call his wife. Have her bring another Dodge Cummins truck down, hook onto the trailer, and then winch his 5500 on the trailer to take it to the shop to fix it today. So his morning's going way worse than mine. So let's go see what we're going to find and get on the road. Lucy's ready. You want to go? Okay. All right. Okay. Are you ready? You want to go for a drive? Okay. Let's go get a truck. Okay. Yeah, she's that dog. Ugh. All right, you guys don't need to look at me anymore. I'll be back with you in a bit when we're on the road. She was sleeping. And I turned the camera on and it beeped and she's like, oh, what's going on? What are we doing? Uh, we are southbound and down and listening to the boys. Lightning at home in, truck show podcast. Go check them out. Uh, I get nothing from I'm not sponsored, nothing. <laughs> they're just friends of mine. I've been on their show a bunch of times and they're awesome dudes. And it's a really fun podcast to listen to. So if you guys listen to podcasts, Spotify, Apple, whatever uh, streaming service you use, look up The Truck Show Podcast, Lightning and Holman. Anyway, moving on. Southbound and down, I think we are about two hours out of the pin drop. Now, again, needle and haystock here. So it was really foggy. Now it's not. As you can tell, it's not as bad. Um, yeah, I, I literally... I'm going to go to a road and drive to mile marker five, which is roughly where it is. And hopefully my truck is sitting there waiting for me. He sent me a picture. I don't know how to put a picture in a video. Someday I'll learn how to do that. But if I did, I'd send you guys a picture. I'll show you the truck when we get there and where it is on the side of the road. Supposedly it's right by a department of transportation gravel pit thing. So yeah, anyway. Hopefully they're not working today and it's not in their way and they don't pick it up with a loader and try and move it or something, but who knows? Anyway, who, um, yeah, the, uh, yeah, that's what she's doing. She doesn't do anything in the car other than relax <clears throat> for the most part, but she will absolutely lose her stuff if I don't let her go. So here, that's, that's where she, that's why she's right there. See that? Okay. 
Anyway. We'll catch back up with you guys in a while. All right, there's the rock pile ODOT station right there for sanding that mountain pass that I just came down. It's a 7% grade, 15 to 20 mile an hour corners. I can't imagine what it felt like for my buddy when he broke the steering tie rod, which would have been back at that corner. And the only option he had was that gravel pit over there or this gnarly road over here. He dove over here and parked and unloaded and thankfully got his truck out of here. So, here we are, side of the road, all loaded up, ready to turn around and head back to the north. So that's got a 71 grill, but I think this is a 72 or 73. I'll have to check the van in the title, I haven't seen it yet. And uh, I'm going to cover this up, I don't want to have his number, but he left a note <laughs> on the windshield of this truck, so if any of the state troopers stop by, it says... Uh, not abandoned towing vehicle broke down will be picked up by noon any issues call and left his name and number so that's pretty cool thanks man i appreciate uh, the the pin drop he literally left me a, a geo pin drop for this so we'll call this a geocache we geocached and we found it and we got it on the truck and trailer and now we turn around and go home he was coming from his ranch which is the opposite direction here and he was headed to his shop which is down in the valley where those clouds are down there he was I was gonna meet him along the highway to shop to pick it up because it would have been easier but he broke down so you know we just persevered and we got her loaded up on the max D trailer got the Ram 5500 doing work as always it was clean when I left and mag chloride and dirt and water and rain and gunk she ain't clean no more that's okay we'll wash it when we get home so and I got a couple of random flies that are hatching in, in my truck right now for some reason. So I left the door open on the other side for Lucy. She hasn't got out yet. But uh, hopefully the flies fly away because why? Why do you want to camp out in my truck? It's so annoying. So you guys can see it's got a little whiskey dent right there. There's a little whiskey dent on the other side door. But, you know, overall, pretty rust-free truck. Originally came from Idaho area so you know high desert like us she's gonna be a it's gonna be a great truck to build doesn't have any drivetrain no motor no training nothing it's literally just a rolling shell and with a title so which is good all right lucy are you gonna come out you want to get out okay she'll let you out earlier I suppose all right we'll throw our note in there let lucy do her business hopefully and uh yeah no motor vehicles here see that sign there no motor vehicles ors 164270 so hopefully we're not upsetting anybody but uh yeah beautiful place to stop and make a pit stop unfortunately it's on the side of a mountain but you know you gotta do what you gotta do all right i'm gonna let lucy do your business and we're gonna get the gps plugged back in and see how far we are from the house now and we'll be back with you guys in a little bit all right we're back on the main highway north uh we are just under two hours back to the barn still doing that it's not just, just hanging out just good co-pilot but it's uh it's pulling down rain now so that's kind of hard 37 degrees, which means it's probably going to snow again. Glad I got this done today. Not going to do too many more of these when the weather gets bad, so kind of have to make hay while you can, you know, so to speak. Anyway, overall, really pleased with the truck. Uh, it's going to make an excellent candidate for a, a swap. I know a lot of guys don't like that, but, you know, somebody might want to put a Cummins in it or an LS or, you know, something. Maybe just all international drivetrain back in. It's a two-wheel drive with the I-beam front end and leaf springs, so very easily uh, retrofitted to modern axles, you know, Chevy or Dodge or something like that. So uh, also can do Ford Super Duty. So anyway, uh, it's gonna make a great trek for somebody, and uh, yeah.
Anyhow, it's, uh, it's raining, so I'm not going to bore you guys with a bunch of scenery of the rain and running down the highway. I did miss, there was a, I forgot to grab the camera, you know, because you're driving at 60 miles an hour. Um, there was a caboose um, on this guy's property a while back, and uh, looked like they were going to set it up for like an Airbnb or something like that. Man, what a cool idea. I have thought about that for years and years, get an old railroad caboose and retrofit it into like a small cabin and then use that for an Airbnb or anything, whatever. Uh, not patented. It's my idea. If one of you guys do it, send me the royalty check. <laughs> uh, I most definitely did not invent that, so just kidding. Anyway, we're going to keep trucking. Uh, I'll let you guys know we're back to the shop and we'll get her unloaded. All right, we made it home. 396 miles, about eight hours round trip. And uh, yeah, I'm over it. I'm ready to go inside and put my feet up, have a little dinner, bite to eat, relax. So, next video you see on this truck, we'll be unloading it and uh, seeing what we're gonna do with it. I actually posted it on Instagram and got several phone calls from interested people already that want it just like it is. So, we'll see. It might go away just like it is or we might do some work to it. Only time will tell. But as always, appreciate you guys for all the likes and the subscribes and the comments. Tell me what you would do. What would you swap it? Would you do a Cummins? Would you do an LS? Would you go back factory? Would you make it four wheel drive? Would you slam it with airbags? Make a low rider with like semi wheels or I don't know. The possibilities are kind of endless. So put in the comments down below what, what you guys would do. And uh, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.